What is up everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. In today's video, guys, we are doing a playthrough of Iron Helm by Jason Glover. And we're playing as Sortab the Sorcerer in today's video, guys. And I'm going to say this right out the gate. We're not using all of the expansions like I have been doing in the last several playthroughs. I'm kind of bringing it back down the basics with this one. So I did add the Loot and Lore expansion pack to this game right here. So we're going to have all of that content in the game and the Fanny pack. Both of those packs can be added right into the base game of Iron Helm, and you can just shuffle all that stuff into the game. So we do have a few new enemies, some new loot, a couple new potions, and some new plot cards as well. We've also got a bunch of new trappings and skills, and as mentioned, we're playing as Sortab right here, so we're going to jump right into it, guys. We've got Sortab here starting with 12 health, 12 energy. He can hold 9 items worth of weight. He starts with 1 ration and 3 gold, which I've already spent on a couple of trappings, which I'll show you guys in just a a moment. He starts with the alchemy skill, which is right over this way. It says to gain two potions of your choice. So right out the gate before we even enter the dungeon, I've added a spark bomb and an ice shard to Sortab's inventory. And the alchemy skill goes on to say, whenever you draw a new potion card, you may draw an additional potion and you can pick one to keep and then discard the other one. So we get to choose between which potion we want to keep anytime we draw one. He starts with the Wooden Staff and Door Wedge Trapping. So the Wooden Staff right here says that you can add an additional 3 damage to, an, to a potion attack. So our Spark Bomb and our Ice Shard are going to be doing additional damage with this awesome Wooden Staff right here. And of course it is two-handed, which means we cannot hold a shield. We also start with the Door Wedge Trapping, which says that we can discard it to avoid an ambush or a skirmish. So that is definitely going to come in handy, I'm sure, at some point. And the three gold that Sortab started with, I've spent on a couple of trappings. One of them is the robes right here, which says you may avoid one skirmish per level. So anytime we run into a skirmish, once per level, we can use our robes to slip past it. And the other one, I've already gone ahead and discarded up this way. It's the rations. It says to discard immediately and gain two additional rations. So I'm going to go ahead and grab two additional rations right here and add those to the one that we start with. And we are good to go. And lastly, I want to mention that I'm also using dungeon deck number one for this playthrough. So I will be coming back to dungeon deck number two, the Howling Abyss. I think that deck is amazing. It's really super fun. I like how it adds more playability for the morality tracker. So we're definitely going to come back to that. But for this one, like mentioned in the beginning, I just want to kind of bring it back down a little bit, bring it back down to basics. So we're going to roll through with dungeon deck number one. That being said, I think we are good to go. We're at level one on the dungeon map. We're at zero on the morality tracker and we've, Got all of our stuff here set up and ready to go. So let's head into the dungeon. Everything is shuffled up and good to go here. And the first room of the dungeon. Ooh, we're going to run into a skirmish. I really don't like that. We're going to skip that. That's not the way to start out the dungeon. Let's go over this way. Ooh, this is the way to start out. This chest must have been stocked with goods recently. Draw one loot card and one potion card. Nice. So we found a treasure chest that has a dagger in it that says... You must re-roll die results of six when a dagger is used as a primary weapon. And it only weighs one, and we've got one, two, three, four, five worth of weight out of our nine. So we'll go ahead and hang on to this dagger. And we also find a potion in the treasure chest in the form of a health potion. That's amazing, dude. Awesome. So we've got three potions already right out the gate to start the game with. Let's go. Cool. All right, moving on. That was a good way to start, dude. A skirmish. No, I don't want to do the skirmish. We're going to push our luck into a skirmish, but thankfully we've got those robes that we bought before entering the dungeon, and we can skip one skirmish per level. Into the next room, an ambush. I think we're going to do it because we'll catch our foe by surprise and gain the upper hand. We're going to draw an enemy card, ignore their initial damage because we attack first, and we're going to add the dungeon level, which is one, to their health. So one added to the health of the undead archer gives him five health right there. He has a two damage uh, buff right there. He also drops one loot. He is undead. He drops a coin when you kill him, and you may not defend against initial damage. But fortunately for us, we're attacking first since we're ambushing him. So I think I'm going to go ahead and spend two energy. That means we get to roll two dice, and we need to deal five damage to this undead archer before he can shoot at us. Ooh, we crush him. Twelve damage, dude. Annihilated. Right there. So we're going to get a loot which is Talhofer Buckler. It says that you can subtract one from initial damage and you get plus one damage to the sum of attack rolls and it may be used with two-handed weapons. Dude, that's amazing. So wait, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will make nine since it, hold, it weighs two. 
and we can equip this. We can equip that with the wooden staff. Dude, that's insane. So we're going to subtract one from initial damage, and we're going to get plus one damage to the sum of all of our attack rolls. What an insane loot to find. Okay, awesome. And we also get one gold. So we'll get the gold right there. Dude, let's go. And then we get the undead archer in our graveyard, and we move on to the next room. Ooh, and it's a merchant. Okay, cool. So on, on level one, the merchant has one potion and one loot available. He's got the field guide, which says you can gain an additional ration whenever you enter the mushroom grove. That's pretty cool. I might sell the dagger to buy that. We'll see in just a moment. And let's see what potion he has. A spark bomb potion. Okay, I think I'm going to sell the dagger. So we're going to sell the dagger to the merchant for one gold, giving us two gold. The field guide costs two, but the spark bomb costs one. I think I want the spark bomb potion, honestly. So I'm going to spend one gold, and we're going to buy the spark bomb potion. So now we have two spark bomb potions. Sweet. Okay, and then I'll let him keep the field guide, and we'll move on from the merchant. Cool, cool, cool. Heading deeper into level one of the dungeon, a skirmish. I'm going to skip it. I'm pushing my luck a lot with those. Ooh, into an arrow trap. Your greed has you walking blindly into a storm of arrows. Gain two poison tokens. Yikes, that really sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. Do we need an antidote or the altar? An ambush? I guess let's do it, because if this is a skirmish or an ambush, that's going to really suck. So we're going to add one to the health of, ooh, a wraith. So it's got eight health. Pretty strong enemy here to be fighting on level one. It does three extra damage. Got a treasure class of two. It is undead. Dude, lots of undead enemies already. And it says initial damage and counter strikes both steal one blessing. Well, we don't have any blessings, so we don't really need to be concerned about that. And we are getting to attack first. I think I'm going to spend... Hmm. Do we want to use a potion? Maybe we use a potion. Yeah, well, let's use one of these spark bombs. So I'm going to go ahead and use the spark bomb potion. I'm going to throw that. And it says to add an additional three damage to all potion attacks with the wooden staff. Plus, oh, wait, this is plus one damage to the sum of all attack rolls. So that's probably just with the weapon, not with potions. Okay, so we're going to get plus three damage. And it says you may discard this card to deal 2d6 damage plus five damage to foes weak to fire. He is not weak to fire, but it's all good. We're still going to do 2d6 plus three from our wooden staff here. Let's see what we get. Oh, so we get nine plus three is 12, and we completely destroy this dude. He is engulfed in flames by the spark bomb potion. And we get two loot. We get one loot in the form of an emerald, which says discard while trading with the merchant to gain any one item he is selling. That's amazing. It weighs zero. And we also get a potion, which is a holy water. So this is amazing. That could have come in handy against the wraith. So if we have to fight the lich at the end, which it's looking like we're probably going to have to since we've already defeated two undead enemies here in our graveyard, we'll have this holy water potion that'll do some extra damage to the lich at the end. So we'll go ahead and hang on to that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine worth of weight. Okay, so we are good right there. We are maxed out on weight. We cannot hold anything else unless we drop something. The campsite. You have spied a relatively quiet location to set up camp. It will not be long before you attract attention to yourself. Choose one of the following actions. We can cook, search, or rest. I think I want to rest because that's going to remove a poison. So we're going to spend one ration to gain two health and lose one poison. Now we haven't lost any health, thankfully, which is good, but we did gain some poison. So we're going to go ahead and lose one of those poison by resting at the campsite and taking a little nap. Moving on to the last room in level one of the dungeon. Ooh, nice. We find a mushroom grove. You have located a grove of young mushrooms. Gain one ration. Nice. Okay, so we get back our ration that we just used resting at the campsite okay cool so guys we're gonna go ahead and shuffle up because that is the end of level one of the dungeon and we're doing pretty well dudes we're still at full health we've got 10 energy three rations we do have a little bit of poison with that one poison and we have one gold coin in our pocket and we have picked up a bunch of potions and emeralds we are looking pretty good right now so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna eat a ration between levels it's gonna gain us one energy putting us up to 11 we've only got one poison so we're not going to gain any extra we're going to move to level two of the dungeon and we're going to draw a plot card which is the wolf your eyes meet those of a frail looking wolf crouched in the cover of shadows it looks like the wolf is starving as it cannot even muster the strength to growl we can feed the wolf or we can ignore the wolf if we feed it we're going to lose one ration and two health but we'll move up one on the morality track and wolves ignore you from now on that's pretty cool if we ignore the wolf we're going to move down one on the morality track um we do have the extra ration to spend. 
So I guess let's just do it. So it says, you take one of your rations and give it to the wolf. There you go, Mr. Wolf right there. The frightened creature snaps at you, drawing blood, but quickly turns to eating your offering. Okay, so he does nip us a little bit, so we lost that one ration and two health whenever he bites us. Let's go ahead and lose two health right there, putting us down to 10. And we move up one on the morality track, so we are at one on the morality track, and wolves ignore you from now on. So if we happen to run into any wolves in the enemy deck, they'll just ignore us, so that is pretty cool. And it also gives us two eye icons toward finding the boss. And here we go into level two of the dungeon. The first room is a skirmish. Oh, by the way, since we're on a new level of the dungeon, we get our robes back, because you can use that once per level. I'm gonna skip the skirmish, and we're gonna go into the other door instead. Ooh, and it's a mushroom grove. You find yourself standing in a grove of ripe mushrooms, gain two rations. Dude, let's go. So we'll gain two rations here. I'm feeling like our good deed has already paid off and we're getting instant karma for feeding that wolf. Here we go, deeper in. Ooh, you find an open chest that has been looted. A single coin remains, gain one gold. Cool, so we've got two gold in our pocket. Where's the merchant, dude? I'm ready to buy some more potions. Going further in, ooh, an altar. So we can either pray for a blessing or healing. We don't have any blessings. It would be cool to get a blessing, but we do also have one poison on us, which I don't like. We could pray for healing. Hmm. I think I want the... Hmm. This is tough, actually. I think I want the blessing. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the blessing token. So we're going to pray for a blessing, get a blessing token. I hope I don't regret that. I don't want to run into the arrow trap. In ambush, we're gonna do it. So we catch our foe by surprise. We're gonna add the dungeon level, which is two to his health, and we get to attack first. And dude, what are the odds of that? That is insane. Do we run into the wolf, but because we fed that wolf from the plot card, wolves ignore us. Dude, that is unbelievably lucky. No matter what happens in the adventure after that, that is amazing that that happened. That is so cool. All right, moving on from that. Wow, super cool stuff. A clearing. Here we go, dude. Let's speed run this dungeon. The old woman. You hear a moaning sound from the shadows and you discover a lost old woman. She is frail and mutters on about losing something in the darkness. Help her escape the dungeon or leave her and search instead. If we help her escape, we're going to lose one ration and one energy, but we'll gain a blessing token and move up one on the morality track. If we leave her and search instead for what she's looking for, we're going to move down one on the morality track because that's not too nice of us. And we're going to gain one random treasure card. So I guess we would find what she's looking for. I think we're going to help her, guys. Let's help her. So we're going to help her escape the dungeon. You spend a good deal of time working your way back out of the dungeon with the woman, but soon you are at the entrance and she turns to you and blesses you before leaving. So we're going to lose one ration and one energy. We got pretty hungry down there. We had, to, we had to snack a little bit. We're also going to lose that one energy, but we're going to gain a blessing token and move up one on the morality track. So we've got two blessings and we go up to two on the morality track. That's pretty good, dude. We're, we're pretty good fellows here, guys. We're doing some good deeds. So we also gained two eye icons toward finding that boss. So we're at four right now. Moving deeper in to level two, into a skirmish, into the next room. I don't want to do that skirmish. Ooh, to a campsite. We found a campsite. So you know what? I'm going to do the same thing as last time. I am going to rest. We're going to spend one ration here. So we still have one left, which is good. We're going to gain two health and lose one poison. So we're going to get back the two health that we lost from feeding that wolf. And we're going to heal that poison from the arrow trap from earlier. Dude, we're looking good right now, man. We're back to full health. No poison on us. Moving deeper into a skirmish. I think I'm going to robes. We're going to robes this because I don't want to run into an ambush or a skirmish here. Into the last room, which is an ambush. We're going to go ahead and take that. We're going to add two to the health of an orc warrior. So he's going to have seven health right here. Go ahead and put the seven on him right there. He does two damage. He's got one loot that he's going to drop and a coin. He is weak to fire. Ooh, we got the spark bomb potion. And it says you may avoid this conflict by spending two gold. We do have two gold, but I feel like we could take this dude down. So let's fight him, especially because we get to jump on him with the ambush. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my spark bomb potion here. We're going to throw that at this guy. Since he's weak to fire, it's going to do plus five damage. And since the wooden staff says add an additional three damage to all potion attacks... That means this is going to do 8 damage right out the gate, which is enough to kill the Orc Warrior. But you know what? We're going to roll for damage anyway and see how much we actually do to this guy. So 2d6 plus 8. Wow. So we rolled 8 plus 8 is 16 damage. We burnt this dude to a crisp and we get the one loot card from him. What was he holding? A health potion. Dude, that's good. That is really good. Let's go, man. 
Sortab is really like his theme is really paying off right now. I mean, like he's got all kinds of potions. I think we've got like one of almost every potion. Ice shard. Oh, we've got two health potions actually, and the holy water. That's amazing. Okay, cool. And he also drops a gold. So we'll go ahead and grab a gold. Just like that, so we're up to three, and we get the Orc Warrior in our graveyard over here, and we have three enemies in the graveyard, which means we can flip these dudes over, and we can go ahead and get a Mind Skill from the Skill deck right here. So let's go ahead and check that out. There's quite a few in here that we could pick from. What do we want? Divinity is one that I pretty much never use. It says whenever you gain energy, you may convert it to health. You gain two blessings when you choose to pray at the altar. That is pretty cool. When you gain energy, you may convert it to health. Interesting. Herbalism, you get plus one energy when you cook at a campsite. That is pretty good. Drinking an antidote will cure, cure all poison. We got the hawking. I kind of want to do something that's like on sore tabs like um, theme here. So I think I'm going to go with herbalism, to be honest with you. So we're going to get plus one energy when we cook at a campsite. And when we drink an antidote, that's going to cure all of our poison. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and put the herbalism skill right there very cool all right and that is it so we discard the spark bomb that we threw at the orc and that was the end of level two dudes very good stuff so we're gonna go ahead and shuffle up the dungeon deck fortunately we do have that one ration we're gonna have to eat that right now that is gonna gain us back in energy shuffle that up just like that eat that ration gain back that energy so we're back up to 11 energy, full health, three coins, no poison, and two blessings. We get our robes back. We are looking pretty good right now. Ooh, I gotta see how much weight we have. Let's see. We got this weighs zero. The door wage is one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, good. We are good. We are maxed out on weight right now. Okay, all of that is good. We don't gain poison. We move to level three of the dungeon, and we get a plot card that is the Traveler. A cloaked figure approaches you. You place your hand on your weapon, fearing a conflict. However, the old man reveals himself as a cleric and makes a gesture of peace. He places his hand on your shoulder and whispers to himself, gain either health or energy equal to your position on the morality track. Here we go, dudes. Okay, so our good deeds are paying off. We're at full health, so we may as well go ahead and gain energy, and we're going to gain one energy back, even though we are at two, because we're only missing one energy. And we get two more eyes toward finding the boss, which puts us at six so just a little bit half passed away right there cool so we're getting pretty close to fighting that boss and that is it we're moving into level three of the dungeon here we go into level three we go into a skirmish dude has it been a skirmish as the first one on every on every card of every dungeon level um i think i'm gonna skip it we do have the door wedge in case it's an ambush it's a skirmish so we're gonna go ahead and use our robes early on level three move past both of those deeper in an ambush I think I'm going to skip it. I'm going to push my luck and I'm going to skip that into, ooh, yikes, dude. That's horrible. Oh, that's terrible. It says the labyrinth. Drat, you cannot seem to find your way out. Discard two rations. Lose three health for each ration you cannot discard. So we're going to lose six health. Dude, that is brutal. One, two, three, four, five, six health right there. Yikes, dude. That's half of our health gone. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and use this health potion right now. And it says you may discard this card to gain four health. So we're going to go ahead and do that and gain back four of the, the health that we just lost. So we're actually down by two right now. Okay, not too, too bad, but yikes. Okay, that was pretty brutal. Let's keep on going. A skirmish. I'm going to skip it, man. Into a oh, skirmish. Nope, I'm using the door wedge. So we're going to, we're going to shove the door wedge under the door and block that off and we get to avoid a skirmish or an ambush. We're going to move past that. Dude, this has been crazy so far in level three, the altar. So we're going to go ahead and pray for a blessing. We're going to gain our third blessing token. There we go. Something that's not bad, finally. Deeper in, ooh, a clearing. Anything can happen in a clearing. Draw a plot card. The corpse. You trip over the corpse of a fellow adventurer. You, as you stagger to your feet, you realize the body belongs to a friend from years past. We can bury the corpse or we can take the money and run. If we bury the corpse, we're going to lose one energy and move up one on the morality track. If we take the money and run, we'll move down one on the morality track, but we'll draw one treasure card. I think we're going to go ahead and do the right thing, guys. You decide the best way to pay tribute to your friendship is a proper burial. So lose one energy. We can spare it. We're at full energy and we move up one on the morality track. We're at three, dude. We are at three on the morality track and we have, we have seven eyes toward finding the boss. All right, moving deeper in. To level three, 
a skirmish. No way, dude. I'm moving past it into... No! This has been so unlucky on level 3. Oh my gosh. All right. So your foe catches you by surprise, gaining the upper hand. Draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level, which is 3, to their initial damage. Ouch. And add the dungeon level plus 4 to their health. So, oh my god. So 7 to the health of a consuming mass. Oh my gosh, dude. So it's got 14 health. Yikes. Okay, this is pretty crazy. It does 3 extra damage, but it's doing 6 damage on its initial attack. It has a treasure class of 2. It's weak to frost, and it says your hand weapon is lost if you roll more than 2 ones during an attack. Okay. It's going to get to attack first. This kind of sucks. This kind of sucks. Okay, so the Talhawker Buckler is going to subtract one from initial damage. That's something. So it's doing five extra initial damage. Dude, we could literally die right here. This is actually pretty crazy. Okay. Here we go. Maybe I should have just done the skirmish. Here we go, dudes. Plus five, two. Oh my god, he rolled doubles and missed. Yes, that is amazing. Okay, he actually misses. He rolls doubles. So we get to retaliate here. Should I throw the Ice Shard? I think I'm going to. Yeah, we're going to throw the Ice Shard potion right now. So we're going to toss the Ice Shard. It's going to do plus 5 to him since he is weak to Frost. And we're getting plus 3 damage to all potion attacks. So we're doing plus 8. So 2d6 plus 8 to this consuming mass. Come on, dude. Nice, dude. 11 plus 8 is 19. Completely destroyed this consuming mass. We freeze it. Solid. It turns into an Ice Cube. And we gain 2 loot. So we're getting 1 loot which is an ice hack. That's pretty cool. You may discard this card to deal 3d6 damage while spending zero energy, so you can throw it. And it says plus three to the sum of your attack rolls versus enemies weak to frost. That is pretty cool. I don't know if we can hold anymore. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We can hold it because it weighs two. So that'll put us up to eight weight right there. And it also drops a potion, which we can hold, which is, hey, an ice shard. So we get our ice shard potion right back. That was amazing. And we get the consuming mass, in the graveyard. Let's go, dude. Okay. That actually wasn't too bad. That could have been way, way worse. Ooh, the arrow trap. I feel like there's good stuff left. It makes me want to move past the arrow trap. Should I push my luck? If it's a skirmish, it kind of sucks, but we're going to push our luck, dude. We're going to move past it into treasure. Let's go. So it says this chest must have been stocked with goods recently. Draw one loot card and one potion card. Okay. So let's see what we get here. The cookbook. Gain one extra energy when you eat a ration at a campsite. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty cool, but we're already maxed out on stuff right now. We don't really need that. So I think I'm just going to drop it, honestly. And the potion we get is an antidote that would be good to have. Do I drop the ice hack? Oh, this is actually pretty tough. Um, The antidote would be good to have. Do I drop the ice hack for it? I think... Oh, this is a really tough decision. So yeah, we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. This is tough, man, because we could throw this, but I like that we can do plus three damage with our our attack potions here. I think I'm going to drop the ice hack. This is a tough decision, and hopefully I don't regret it, but I want to pick up the antidote just in case we get poisoned. That's going to come in handy. Okay, so moving on into the last room of level three. Here we go. The campsite. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to search, man. We're going to search and gain a ration because we don't have any. And in between levels, we're going to have to eat one or suffer three damage. So we're going to go ahead and gain a ration by searching around the campsite. Okay, cool. That was the end of level three. We're going to shuffle up the dungeon deck here. We're going to move into level four. Dudes, we're getting pretty far. We are getting pretty far in this run, guys. All right, and we just found that ration at the campsite, which is amazing. So we're going to use that to eat in between levels. We're going to gain back one energy. We're at full energy right now. Very cool. All right, uh, we've got a no poison on us, and we are going to move into level four of the dungeon and draw a plot card. And dudes, it is the shrine. In the clearing, you find a towering shrine covered in vegetation. You are overwhelmed by a sense of power just as a gentle breeze rushes past you. Gain blessing tokens equal to your position on the morality track, dude. That is insane. We're on three. We gain three blessing tokens right there that isn't that's the most i've ever got from the shrine and we get three eye icons and we're already sitting on seven which means we find the boss because we are now at 10 eye icons dude let's go okay awesome dude here we go this is it we're gonna refresh our robes not like it matters but we got that all set up right there we're looking good okay let's see how many enemies we've got here so we've got one frost we've got one fire but we've got one 
two undead enemies, which means we are facing the Lich. Uh-oh. All right, dude. The Lich is coming out. Here he is. He's got 20 HP. So let's go ahead and put two tens on him, just like that. He does four damage. He's got a treasure class of two. He's undead, of course. And when the Lich hits with his initial attack or counter strikes, he, he steals two energy. So anytime the Lich hits you, he steals two energy from you. Dude, luckily for us, we're sitting on full energy and we have a bunch of potions, including a holy water potion, which he is weak to. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out our blessings. We've got six of them here. Let's go and let's see what we've got. Do we... We're doing pretty good. Like, we have no poison. We've got full energy. So the most we can hope for is to just get some hearts right here. So let's see what we get. Okay, we get an energy, but we're already maxed out. We get full heal on the poison, which we don't have any. There we go. We get our two hearts, so we are completely maxed out. And then just for fun, we would have gotten another heart, another energy, and two more hearts. Wow. Five hearts, two energy, and cured all poison with blessing tokens right there. Crazy, dude. That was amazing. All right, cool. So those were our blessing tokens. I'll go ahead and set those face up over this way. All right, guys. Here we go. The Lich is going to get to attack first, which is the only thing that's a little bit scary. Is there anything we can do? Well, we do have the Taff Talhoffer Buckler, so that's going to subtract one from initial damage. And I think that is about it. Oh, you know what else I just realized, guys? I wasn't drawing two potions with my alchemy skill the entire game. But you know what? It's all good. We are set up right now. I'm actually happy with what we have, so it's all good. Okay, I'm sure somebody's going to put that down in the comments. And dudes, if I ever make any mistakes... Please let me know down in the comments. There's a lot of little moving parts in Iron Helm, so I'm bound to make some mistakes here and there, and I do appreciate it when you guys point those out to me. So thank you so much. You can put those down in the comments below. Okay, here we go, dudes. The Lich is going to attack. Instead of doing four, he's going to be doing an additional three damage because our Buckler is going to be blocking just a little bit of that powerful damage from the Lich here. Let's see how much he does. Ooh, so three plus three is six damage. Yikes. That is literally half of our health gone right there in one hit. We're down to six health. He also steals two energy from us. Okay, guys. Whew. Um, we got to take this guy down. This is actually kind of scary. Um, I need to do the health potion first of all, because we need to gain some health back. So we're going to discard this. We're going to gain four health. So we're going to go back up to 10 HP. That's three, four right there. So we're only missing two. So we're at 10 HP. Okay, we're going to use the holy water, dudes. That is what we're doing. So we're going to throw this holy water potion at the Lich. It's going to do plus five damage to the undead, which he is, plus three from the wooden staff, so eight damage. So we're going to roll 2d6 and add eight to it. Best case scenario, we roll double sixes and one shot this dude. Here we go. Whew, we were halfway there, dude. So eight plus eight is 16 damage, dropping him down to four off of that one potion. That was amazing, dude. So... The Lich is hurting, dude. He is burning right now. He's going to retaliate. He's pretty PO'd. He's going to be doing four damage to us. All right, here we go. Four plus three is seven. Ooh, okay. So let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven hearts of damage right there. We are sitting on three HP, dudes. Three HP. All right. Here we go, guys. This is it right here. We're going to go ahead and use... Oh, and he also steals two energy from us when he hits us, by the way. But it doesn't matter, dude. We're about to finish this guy off. We're going to throw the Ice Shard Potion at him. We're going to get plus three damage to it from the Wooden Staff. So plus three to whatever we roll. And we rolled Snake Eyes. Two plus three is five. It doesn't even matter. That is enough to take down the Lich. Let's go, dude. We actually did it. We beat the base adventure of Iron Helm. Dudes, we get two... Loot. Let's see what we get. We're going to get an undeath potion. How on brand is that? That's cool, man. So it says discard to destroy any undead foe with five or less base health or discard to make any enemy weak to undead attacks. That is really cool. What a cool item for the Lich to drop. That's amazing. So we've got the undeath potion and we get a potion. And I guess now's a good time to use it. It's better late than never. We can use the alchemy potion. Anytime we draw a potion, you actually draw two. Hmm, that was a pretty hard choice. I think I'm going to go with the energy potion, though. So we're going to get ourselves an energy potion right there. Cool stuff, dude. So the Lich has been taken down. That means we can move on with Sortab to a level 2 adventure in the next video. So guys, we're going to go to the Lonely Troll Inn. We're going to heal up all of our life. We're going to gain all of our energy back. And we're going to be able to either hire a henchman 
or buy some new trappings. So if that sounds exciting to you, be sure to tune in for the next video and look out for that one coming soon, guys. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up like button. If you're not already, hit that red subscribe button, dude, and click the bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. And thank you guys so much for watching. I upload videos like this all the time. And there should be a video popping up on the end screen right about now. You can click on that to continue watching. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Love all you guys to death, and I'll see you in the next video.